We're gonna make the easiest woodworking project that sells. Hey, I'm Matt. Today, we're gonna to be making charcuterie boards four ways. One of them, all you need is a jigsaw and a sander. The other three, all we're adding is a router and a drill. That's it. These are so simple, basic tools, and we're gonna be able to make these awesome projects. And to make this project even easier, I've got some information to share with you on charcuterie board kits coming later. If you stick around at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how to finish these three different ways. Also, how to stage, market, and sell these, and what to price your charcuterie boards. Let's build them. So to start off, I'm just gonna use this push stick off my table saw and design the handle shape. And then I just measured out about 14 inches and drew the rest of the shapes. And just take my jigsaw, go slow, and just cut out the design that you previously marked. Once that's cut out, I just used my orbital sander and 80 grit sandpaper to sand the whole thing. I went around those radiuses and smoothed those out just to make it look a lot better. Get those saw marks off of there and just makes them look more uniform. I also sanded the edges with 80 grit to give it that round over look. To make this even easier and more approachable, I've teamed up with WTGHardwoods.com and we come up with a kit for you. It's gonna include two charcuterie board blanks and two different wood species. You'll also receive two paper handle templates that you'll be able to stick onto your blanks so that you can just cut those out, make it super easy to get the handle designs like we have today. You'll also get a can of our Outlaws board butter so you'll be able to finish your project or you can give the can with the board to your customer or recipient so that they can replenish their board after they wash it a few times. Man, this stuff's so good, it ought to be outlawed. The second board, we're gonna be using ironwood. This is a Arkansas native species. It's actually harder than walnut. And I use this Odie's oil can just to give me a radius that I felt like was a, just a good size. And I just designed that handle just like this. And this is one of the templates you'll receive in the kit if you choose to get that. But if not, you can just use a, something like this and draw your own. If you'll notice I use that knot hole as a natural place to put a hole. Same thing using the jigsaw, just go slow. It, it tends to try to hang up on you if you try to take too tight of a curve or at least mine does, so sometimes you just have to work around that. Once I got it cut out, I tried to use an inch and a half Forstner bit. Forstner bits drill a cleaner hole than a normal drill bit, and they're just much better for this application. This uh, wasn't working out for me because of that knot hole was so soft. I should have started on the back side instead of the front like I tried to there. And once I flipped it over, I realized I wasn't lining up. So I pulled out this 5 8 inch portion of bit and drilled basically a pilot hole in there. And looking back, I should have went with a smaller pilot hole. That way I wouldn't have had to use the, dr the drill press here. Here you see me using brown Starbond CA glue to fill up those insect holes that's in ambrosia type woods like this. There is a little bit of a debate on whether you can use this on serving boards like this, but Starbond actually has an article on their website about using it on serving boards. So I'll link that in the description below. You can read it and decide for yourself. And then I use a 1 8 inch round over bit to round over the inside of the hole as well as the outside edges of the board. Now, Miss 731 designed these next two. She come out and drew a pattern for me. She just sketched out a radius on the uh, scrap piece of walnut we had left over, and then basically told me to put a handle there. So I'd use the bandsaw for this, but you could certainly use the jigsaw just as easy. I did the bandsaw just to show you another method of doing it. So to give this board a little bit more definition, Miss 731 wanted the sides to be a little more concave and less square, so that's how we designed it. Then I just traced out where I wanted the hole to be, put it kind of in the center, use that 5 8 inch drill bit and drill down almost through. And then I flip it over and drill from the other side so that we don't have any breakout or splintering, anything like that. Then just connect the dots and use the jigsaw to finish cutting the handle. Using that 80 grit sandpaper to round over those radiuses and get them a little more uniform as well as all the edges and the top. Then I switched over to a 3 8 inch round over bit, rounded over all the edges and inside the handle. That gives it a nice round look. Now this unique handle design is Miss 731. She come out and she looked on the internet and found a few that she liked and kind of combined several of those. She come out and sketched this out and then changed her mind and then she changed her mind again and then this is what we come up with. Then I just cut this piece out with a jigsaw. This is ironwood again we're using. This is a really tight radius here. You see me have to kind of come in from a couple of different ways to be able to cut this out and make it look right.
and then a 5 8 inch round over bit just to get this hole started. I drill it all the way through and then I'll take the jigsaw and finish up this teardrop shaped hole. And I just sanded the whole thing with 80 grit really fast uh, on those edges. I didn't want to bust that up too much and then sand all of it up with 80. Then I switched over to 120 and sanded every board with 120 grit on all sides. This is one of the handiest little tools you could get for your sander. It's basically spongy and it attaches to the sander just like sandpaper and then you put your sandpaper on that. What that does is prevents you from actually damaging the edges of the boards when you're sanding. So if you've already got a round over or a chamfer on your workpiece, this smushes down and actually won't let the sandpaper dig in and cause damage. I just took 120 grit and sanded inside those holes and those radiuses where the sander can't get. Now it's time to pop the grain. You just spritz it with some water and let that dry. I wiped off the excess, let it dry until it's dry. Sometimes it takes 30, 45 minutes. Now 220 grit, I sanded the inside of the holes, the radiuses, the handles, all that. Then I put 220 grit on the sander and sanded all boards with 220 grit. This is just food grade mineral oil. This is the one we made with minimal tools and then I've just got this in a plastic tub and you can see we're just gonna dunk it. Let that soak about an hour be good to go. This one won't fit in that tub, so what do you do? You can't let it soak, right? Uh, there's a couple of things to do. I actually prefer soaking, but sometimes you can't. In this instance, I'll, I don't want to use the other two finishes on this. I want mineral oil on it, and so what we're going to do is just splash it on there. You want to make sure you do both sides, and what we'll do is let this soak in a little bit, and then we'll come back and put some more on it and uh, just kind of do that for a few times till it gets soaked in there. For this piece of walnut, I'm gonna use Odie's oil. I, I really like this finish. But you just put it on a paper towel or a rag and we're just gonna work that in circular motions. A little bit of stuff goes a long way, so it, it, it won't take much of it. Make sure you get all those edges and inside that handle. I put this on pretty thick, uh, as you can see, and I'm gonna let that soak in or sit just for a few minutes, probably 10 or 15 minutes. All right, last but absolutely not least, we actually sell this. This is Outlaw's board butter. As you can see, the ingredients are mineral oil and beeswax. The exact same stuff we've dunked our other boards in is in this mixture that we make here at 731. As you can see, it's a wax, but it's not a hard wax. So all you're gonna do is take this and just buff it into the surface. You can also use this after you wash your cutting boards uh, to recondition them. So it puts a little bit of that oil and a little bit of a wax finish back on top. It's a really good way to finish a board and it's very inexpensive. I wanna go ahead and put it on a heavy coat of it. Let that sit before we buff it off. So the one we put Odie's on, you can, it's still on there. See that? Just got some dry paper towels. Or you can do a terry cloth or whatever you want to get that excess off. Then we're gonna take these out of the mineral bath. And so there's people that let them soak overnight. Some people let them soak an hour, two hours. It's totally up to you. I think an hour or two is just fine. Now this is gonna take a couple few hours to dry. Usually I let this sit overnight. All right, I let these charcuterie boards dry overnight and they're ready to roll, except if I make a cutting board or charcuterie board, I always put some type of conditioner on it. Even if I've soaked it in mineral oil or use Odie's oil or anything like that, this is the one that we put board butter on. The only, that's all the only finish that's on there is board butter. I don't need to do anything else with that. I put two coats of that on there. Put a coat on, let it sit 15, 20 minutes, then wipe it off. Put another coat on, let that sit 15 or 20 minutes, then buff it off, you're done. And then for the other three, I'm just gonna put a thin layer of board butter on there and buff it off, and these will be ready to sell. Give us gifts, however you wanna do it. Now, if you wanna talk about a woodworking project that sells, first thing you gotta do, it doesn't matter if it's the charcuterie board or your furniture you're making, you need to stage them. And that's what you see Miss 731 doing here. She decorated these up for me using meats, cheeses, crackers, pickles, dips, 
things like that. And when she gets these staged up, I'm gonna start taking pictures and I'm gonna take pictures from multiple angles. That way you can show people how these are intended to be used. And you also wanna include pictures of just the product itself without anything on it, but that will be later in the post or later in your listing. As far as pricing goes for the two ironwood charcuterie boards, $100 to $125 is what I price these at. And for the walnut boards, between $40 and $60. I think I got one at $45 and one at $50. It just depends on your area and your customer base. And you see every one of these designs got done the same way. She would decorate them in the design that she wanted, and then I would take the pictures. Just try out different styles that you like, and then take pictures. Take really good pictures. That should give you an idea of what the price I'm at, and then you can enjoy the food. Also be sure to wash off your boards if you actually put the meats and cheeses on there to get that oils and things like that that the meats leave behind and that way your customer doesn't get a dirty board. And I wanna encourage you to try some of these projects even if it puts you outside your comfort zone because a lot of times we get worried and anxious about trying something new and trying to do projects like this or especially when you first start out you're like, is it gonna be good enough? Can I do this? I'm telling you, you can just get after it. I'd like to leave you with a verse, 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you and he does. He cares for you more than you can imagine, more than I can even imagine. There's a link in the description below to tell you more about that if you want. And if you want to see how to make easy cutting boards, click that box right there. Clicking that box gets you a big old virtual fist bump. Also, another great beginner woodworking project right there for you.